This is Bill Graham with Microclone. This is how you make the tissue culture media using the materials in the kit. I've got everything set up over here. This is what you should have. The kit will come with the prepared meat ingredients. You're gonna need a pressure cooker of some kind. I've got the 22 quart Presto, uh, which is fantastic. This will also work in a large instant pot, like a 10 quart size. Uh, and I've even got a small pressure cooker for small batches over here. I'm using a magnetic stir because it makes it more convenient. We've got these on the website if you need it, but all of this can just be stirred by hand as you make it. So pressure cooker, ingredients, stir, and the baster from your kit to be able to fill the containers. So let's get going. So the kit as it comes makes one liter and the ingredients and instructions are on every one of the containers and in this case we're going to do a half a batch so i'm going to do half of the ingredients of everything i'm going to start with a half a liter of purified water and it'll be half of my media mix so 60 milliliters is a whole liter we're going to do half of that which will be 30 milliliters easy enough in it goes just the same way I have uh, divided the agar powder and I have half as much sugar. So this is a multiplication recipe which calls for 30 grams of white sugar and I have measured out 15 grams of white sugar for this half load. I'm going to get that in there and get my stir started to dissolve that sugar. And then lastly will be the agar powder and this I've cut in half as well. Sprinkle it in so it doesn't get clumpy. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my baster to stir it, mix it, give it a couple pumps. Now we're gonna pH it and I'm gonna add food color because I like to, it, the same colors that I use when I prepare it for the kits, I use the same colors so that I can identify the media from all of the bottles in the work area. So let's go ahead and start with the pH. I know from the water we use that I'm always gonna need a little bit of down. And of course the kit came with your pH down. And it's formulated so each drop should be about 10th of a point when we're really close to the target, which is 5.8, 5.9. How about that, huh? It was seven tenths of a point off, I added seven drops. Everybody should be that good. So we got our pH correction and this is the um, metatopalin formula. So it is, uh, my color for this is orange. So I just add a little touch of yellow and a little touch of red. There we go. Now we're ready to fill containers. Now the thing about um, mixing agar at medium and loading containers, I'm doing this cold. It's easier and it's faster. Uh, agar powder does not dissolve like the sugar does. So I'm gonna keep this stirred as I fill each container to just make sure each one has the right amount of agar powder in it because it's going to boil and then it melts when it's in the pressure cooker. Uh, you, you can also uh, boil or microwave this to melt it and then distribute it, but uh, it makes it tough when you're using the turkey baster because the hot liquid uh, likes to shoot out of the, the baster but then it's melted, so you can just tilt and pour, okay? We're gonna do a, a cold filling today. And I've gone ahead and marked my um, baster for the common measurements for the vessels we're doing. I got about seven mils for the tubes and a half an ounce for the uh, flip tops and full ounces for our next size containers. We got all our material ready for to fill the containers and to sterilize them. Step one is to preheat the pressure cooker. Start warming that up because it's gonna make everything faster. And this is a good time to show you the containers that come in the kits and the bigger ones that you'll get later when you start getting better and we're gonna do more containers in each vessel. So your kit came with the glass tubes. Each one of these will be about seven or eight milliliters. I like to fill it to the line in the rack the plastic flip tops that came in your kit, which are two plant containers. This is one we're gonna move up to. The first time you're making media, you'll probably be making the tubes and the flip tops. You'll move 
into two plant containers, three plant containers, and bigger as you get better because we're not afraid to put so many plants into the same container because you'll have less risk that one's gonna spoil and take out, of, take out its neighbors. My three plant container is the glass baby jar, which used to be the standard tissue culture vessel for all tissue culture, but because the baby foods are now in plastic containers, they become more rare. But I still love to use the containers because they live forever. Clear glass, of course, and we've got the fancy lids that snap on and snap off. So you can do all of this with one hand. When you start getting bigger and more plants from that, I have the uh, four plant clear square containers. And for the masters, when you are into large production, doing several hundred clones a day, we we'll like we use the clear polypropylene deli containers. This is a half liter size and with the filtered lid. And this is good for six plants. So this is really a great way to go because it will make making tissue culture plants so much faster and cleaning and uh, reusing material so much faster. So let's get started. I'll begin with my rack someplace. I always line up a single or double row of tubes so I can see the bottoms. I'll begin by giving it a couple pumps to make sure everything is stirred. And I'll go ahead and drop a, a whole tube because I can do a few, tu a few culture tubes at a time. The auger powder is not settling so fast that I'm afraid that I am, will be, uh, not have the right amount of auger powder in each one. But I've filled those right to that line, really easy. And then I put the lids on um, and I'll push them down, just not all the way. So I've still got about a quarter inch to go and that'll allow the steam and the air and everything to equalize. These are gonna be boiling inside in the pressure cooker. So we're really letting the steam out but there'll be pressure on the outside from the steam also. So uh, it'll, it'll balance each other out. We'll, um, I'll show you uh, how to load a pressure cooker and then go on with my other containers. Like I said, I love the Presto 22 quart. If you've got a 20 quart or 24, same thing, just getting bigger than like the 10s or 16 quart size. This is a, a locking type lid, super easy. This is my favorite. And just as a reminder, we want to run this for 50, at 15 PSI for 20 minutes. So let's fill our tubes and load our pressure cooker. I'm going to go ahead and put these in first. There we go. And then I'm going to just load the containers as I fill them. So we have more room to work. I don't need the meter anymore. And now we'll do a container. That's what we're looking for, about three quarters of an inch. I'll uh, do that again so that we can see the baster and the measurement on it. And these stack nicely right on the bottom. Incidentally, a pressure cooker will also have a plate in the bottom of it called a trivet. And you can see it in here. And the purpose of that is to hold the bottles above the flat bottom of the cooker so that it doesn't make bubbles underneath it and shake them all around. It also guarantees that we have usually about another eight ounces of water uh, for safety. You can see how much water I put in this cooker. It's, I've covered the trivet, I've covered the plate in the bottom, plus about a quarter of an inch. And just for kicks, I'm gonna go ahead and warm, add just a touch right there to make sure it's higher. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and set a timer. I've made these timers for, uh, turning the pressure cooker off automatically. And if you're interested, please give us an email. Uh, we can put one together for you. But I've set it at about 40 minutes because I know it'll take 20 for this to start boiling and then it'll be at pressure for about 20 minutes and then it turns itself off. Let me do some more containers. So I'm gonna fill this up to the, uh, just about the one ounce mark. There we go. And you can see that's the perfect amount of media for this size container. It's just less than an ounce. Don't snap the lids closed. Uh, when they start to boil inside, inside the cooker, it sounds like popcorn because they're all doing this. So I curve them over, but leave them cracked. 
Let's do a couple more of those. Make this easy. This is, oops. This is where the marks make everything easy and fast. There we go, one, two, three. Get all of those guys in there. I feel like Jamie Oliver. Uh, baby jars. Baby jar will hold uh, a little more media, media than that. It's gonna be just over an ounce. So I'm gonna hold, do an extra tall squeeze. There we go. There we go, same thing as I'll put the lid on. These don't fit too tightly anyway. These are supposed to breathe. None of these lids are airtight because we want the pressure to equalize when it's sterilizing. And of course the plants in culture are still breathing. They're using oxygen more than they're using CO2 inside the vessel because we're giving the plant sugar. So it's metabolism that is uh, occurring in the plant tissue. Plants do photosynthesis and metabolism. Uh, and we're not depending so much on the photosynthesis as the sugar, which is what makes tissue culture special, is we're giving it the sugar. Do one more of those. And let me give that just another little splash. On goes the lid into the cooker. And now we got our uh, clear square containers. This one usually takes two pumps to fill. So there's the first one. And there's the second. So that's about two ounces of media in that vessel. And there we go. Let's do that again. One and two. When you get your kit, yes, your lids are going to be a little bit tight when they're brand new. They loosen up as you use them. But I'm going to snap this on. There we go. Just not all the way. Same thing. It's just a little bit loose. We'll tighten them when they're coming out of the pressure cooker and they've cooled. So those go in the cooker. And then lastly, I've got my six plant deli container. And at this point, I'm not even gonna use the uh, baster anymore. We're just gonna pour these by hand. There you go. I only got a little bit of media left, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish that up. Little deep, could make a couple more tubes out of it, but that will work for now. This will breathe through the filter hole, so it'll pressurize. So this actually, I can snap the lid down um, nearly all the way. All of these plastics, for everybody who's worried about me putting plastic in a pressure cooker, all of my plastics are polypropylene or polycarbonate, and, all, and they can all stand the uh, 250 degrees of the pressure cooker. So that's loaded. The lid, in the, with the Presto especially, has a couple of opposing marks. So I've got two arrows that match. That means it's locked down. There we go. Lock it into place. The heat's on. I'm watching my timer. It's wound down now to about 35 minutes. And I know it's going to take about 15 for it to blow out the steam in the cooker. Get to 15 PSI. Once I hear that start to boil, Reliably, that's going to be within a minute or two of 20 minutes. And because it's a wind down timer, like an egg timer, it's going to turn itself off. So this is what I do every evening before I go home, is I put in a batch of media and it will cook, turn itself off, cool down, and be ready to unload when I come in in the morning. So our cooking cycle has ended. I just heard the knob drop about 10 minutes ago, which meant that the pressure is down to normal. This thing is still hot as the devil right here, but it's cold, so it feels good now. But I'm just gonna move this into the clean area. So we're gonna move this into the room with the air filter to unpack it, because uh, once the jars are out of the pressure cooker and they cool, that air inside is gonna shrink. And when the air shrinks, it's going to pull in uh, the outside air, and we want that outside air to be filtered. So I'm gonna move that over to the uh, clean room and I'm gonna bring with me my little hot tongs uh, for handling it because these little tubes are hot and wet. All right, step inside the room. 
click, a little light to work by. And this is easy. You open it up, you've got a nice shot of steam. They're not too bad. The lids are slippery, but I've got a good grip on it. I just wanted to make sure that everybody's melted and they look good. That's cool. And this is where I'm gonna use the tongs. Got these guys. And I'll just move these out. Again, making sure I always have a good grip on it. And I can cool these on this bench because I've got the filter here. Or I'd move them over here and put them on the shelf. I've got the plants on the shelves with the lights and I keep the media on the shelves above the lights because they don't need to be in direct light. So I can put this right there. Oops, there we go. That's why I keep the trays around. There's another one. Give that a little swirl right there. Swirling it just makes sure that everything inside is mixed like it's supposed to. That's not so bad. Boom. Making sure not to get the filter wet. Tape in case anything leaves the grow room. When you're lifting tubes, lift them by the rack so that they don't slip. Everybody here looks good. Onto the shelf. And what do we got? Three more, three more tubs. And that's it. So these will cool over the next hour. If you're waiting to do tissue culture with these right away, is give them an hour to cool. But this is really the kind of thing to do the evening before or the morning of so that they have time to cool. Remember, you can make media days ahead of time, weeks ahead of time. Some of the media that we use here will be uh, three weeks old. Uh, we try to turn it over and of course, just like retail, rotate your stock, first in, first out. But uh, always have lots of media made up ahead of time, you know, at least a three or four week supply. And that way you're never running for this. When you're ready to put plants in the culture, you can clean them, cut them, put them in the jars, put them on your lighted shelves. This is waiting for you all the time. And then once you're in the containers, this, everybody grows by themselves, self-contained for several weeks. You're coming in to just make sure everybody's clean, your filters are running, everything is like it's supposed to, and of course to admire your plants and look for your new growth. This is Microclone Tissue Culture. <laughs>